Hi, I'm Lillian. Welcome back to my channel, Ink and Pages. In this video, I'm going to be trying out some of the different bookshelf organisation methods to see if there is one out there that I will like more than how my bookshelves are currently organised. Honestly, I don't think there will be. Um, I think I've pretty much locked in how I like my books to be organised, but I'm open to the possibility that one of them may surprise me. For each of the different organisation methods I try, I'm going to be talking about what it was like to set up and then some of the pros and cons. I know this video is going to take like months to film because I don't want to just move from one organisation to the other really quickly. I want to try and live with them for a couple of days just to see if there's anything about them that surprises me. I've already got a pretty decent list of organisation methods to try, but if I come across any new ones in the process of filming this, then I will try them as well. So let's talk about bookshelf organisation in general and how mine are organised. I actually think it's difficult to say my bookshelves are organised in one specific way and say that and it be completely true. Because if you think about it, you're nearly always combining different methods of organisation and you're always making decisions, whether consciously or unconsciously, about what different methods you want to combine and how exactly you're going to do it. For example, I generally say all my shelves are organised in a rainbow. And while that is true, there are many different layers to how my shelves are organised and the rainbow layer is actually the very last one. The first layer is fiction or non-fiction. The books on my rainbow shelves are actually just my fiction collection and I have a separate bookcase for all my non-fiction books. Layer two would then be my read and unread books. I keep all my unread, aka my TBR books, on this top right shelf on my fiction shelves. On the other hand, for my non-fiction bookcase, I view these as more of a reference library, so it's not incredibly important to me whether I've read them or not yet, so they're all just mixed together. Then layer three is not even the rainbow, we're not there yet, it is series versus standalones. Sort of. Basically, if a series has spines which are of a similar kind of colour or exactly the same colour, I try and integrate them into the rainbow as much as I can. And then any series I have which just don't really match or the book spines are all completely different colours, I have a separate section for them at the very bottom of the rainbow. And finally, layer four is the rainbow. I organise my books by colour. It goes from brown, blue, yellow and orange, if I had any yellow and orange books that is, through green, light blue, dark blue, purple, pink, white, grey and black. So when I say I'm going to organise my shelves, I'm only going to be doing my fiction shelves. I'm going to be taking out my Harry Potter books and not including them in the reorganisation. Usual side note of fuck JK Rowling and what she stands for and I'm going to link some trans charities in the description to this video. And I'm going to be taking my unread books off my TBR shelf and incorporating them into the rest of my books just so I can fill up some of the space that's left over. So the first kind of reorganisation I'm going to try is the full rainbow. Let's go. Because my books were mostly in a rainbow already, this wasn't too difficult and it took me maybe 25 minutes from start to finish. I decided to keep the order of the colours the same from brown and red at the start to white, grey, black at the end because I already know my books and vaguely how many of each colour I have, but depending on your own shelves you might want to do this differently. Also for the order of colours you have to consider if you want them to wrap around the shelves. For instance mine just go from left to right and left to right, but this can leave some breaks in the colour. As I expected, the thing I struggled with the most was deciding what colour to count a lot of the books as. If there are multiple colours on the spine, it's just personal judgement where you put it in the rainbow, and you can see me struggle with placing a couple of books like this. Also, I found the green turquoise blue section a little difficult to order, uh, maybe because I'm a staunch believer that turquoise is bluey green and not greeny blue, but I got there in the end. And then to pad out the bookshelves, I just turned some of the books to face outwards. So let's talk pros and cons. I've lived with my shelves this way for a couple of days now and I love how they look. I cannot deny it. This is the dream appearance for my shelves. Organising your books this way can make them just 
the focal point of whatever room they're in and a pretty major piece of home decor. If you're like me and you find it much easier to remember the colour of a book than its author or its genre, then it will be easy for you to find your books when they're organised like this. There are plenty of people out there who like to insult you if you have rainbow bookshelves, but they just don't seem to grasp that this is genuinely the easiest way for some people, including me, to organise their shelves. In my experience so far, this genuinely is the most practical method for me. So the cons, obviously, if you are not someone who finds it easy to remember the colour of a book, then organising them based on colour just won't work for you, and there's also nothing wrong with that. This method also means that most of my series have been split up, except for I think the Throne of Glass series managed to survive intact in the white section. And I already know I like to keep my series together, even if it makes the rainbow slightly less perfect. And finally, if you simply don't have books in enough colours, your rainbow just isn't going to look that good. My orange and yellow section is practically non-existent, but I've managed to make it work by turning out Firekeeper's Daughter, which would normally have just been on my TBR shelf and not part of the actual rainbow. But if you're missing half the colours of the rainbow, simply because the genres you read most often tend to have a smaller mix of colours, then it's just not going to be possible to get a fully satisfying rainbow on your shelves. So overall, even though I love how my shelves look now, this method of organisation just isn't as practical for me as my original one. Next, I'm going to be trying a supposedly more practical way to organise my books, which is by title. I didn't really think about how I was going to do this before diving in, which was a mistake. I started by just grabbing books that started with A, B, C, D or E and then piling them at the top of my shelves. And then about halfway through, I realised I should have been making piles of books on the floor to sort books that started with all the same letter. I then started to do this and it made things a lot easier, but overall this still took about 40 minutes to do. As per usual alphabetising conventions, I ignored words like A and the at the beginning of titles, which I think will be obvious, but I wanted to mention it just in case. Instead of splitting up series and organising each individual book under its own name, I decided to keep series together and sort them under the series title, which actually ended up a bit more annoying than I expected. You can see me put all the Game of Thrones books under G, and then I realised they're technically called the Song of Ice and Fire series and should be under S. It was also quite hard getting all the series back together again after splitting them up for the full rainbow, so that took longer than expected. Once I had all the books in alphabetical order, I tried to pick some to face outwards. My original plan was to use these as markers, and for some common letters, to use the first book whose title started with that letter. But that didn't entirely work, because some of those books were graphic novels and wouldn't stand up properly, or they just didn't fit properly with the shelves and the rest of the books. So I kind of had to make do with what fit, and this is how my shelves turned out. I think the most obvious selling point of this method of organisation is that it's just very easy to find your books. I don't think anyone would struggle that much to find something on their shelves if they're organised in this way. It's logical, it's quite easy to put together, so long as you plan ahead a bit more than I did. And then once your shelves are done, you don't really have to make any more decisions in the future about what you're going to do. Once you get a new book, it's very easy to know where it's going to go on the shelf because there's really only one space for it, according to the alphabet. One disadvantage is, no, it's not as aesthetically pleasing as the rainbow shelves. But you can say that about every single other method of organisation, so I'm not going to mention it each time, just here. But honestly, I can't think of any other specific disadvantages to having your shelves organised this way. I think this is as close to a crowd pleaser as I'm going to get. So let's then move on to the next method of organisation where I'm going to sort my books by author. This took about half an hour to put together and again I worked by making piles on the floor of authors whose names started with the same letter. It did throw up some obstacles like what do you do if an author uses multiple pen names and what if you don't have any clue what the author's name is. For instance the Lady Grace mysteries I think have multiple ghostwriters so I just ended up putting them all under C for Cavendish which is the name of the character in the books who supposedly wrote them. Then what if there are multiple authors? I just went with the author whose name appears first on the cover, and then for any anthologies I put them under the editor's surname, and if there are multiple editors I just went with the surname of the first name on the cover again. And while organising I realised I own so many authors whose surnames start with M, literally three full shelves are taken up by them. 
And there were some authors that almost tripped me up, like surely Louisa May Alcott goes under A and Alea Dawn Johnson goes under J. At least that's where I put them. And once you have all of an author's books together, how do you organise them? I didn't really, they're in random orders except for the series, but I think the most logical ways would be alphabetically or in order of publication. Then finally, I chose some of my favourite authors and the authors I own the most books from to face outwards. So I'm surprised by how much I like my books organised this way. It keeps the series all together in this really satisfying way, but also books by the same author tend to have similar or matching designs. So they look really good next to each other on the shelf and not split up or divided as if you were organising just by title. Personally, I don't find it really easy to immediately remember an author's name, but if you do, and that's the easiest way for you to recall your books, then this method of organisation would probably be the most practical for you. It's also really easy to see which authors you like the most and which ones you own the most books from. So anyone who's just looking at your shelves for the first time will quickly be able to get an idea of your reading tastes and preferences, and I really like that idea. The disadvantages are you still have to contend with the usual problems of height and space on your shelves. I had a couple of books that just wouldn't fit in the section so I had to take them off to finish the organisation. And authors might end up having their books split over several shelves just because of how the spacing on your bookshelf works. And what's annoying about that is that it's more likely to happen to authors you own a lot of, so it's more likely that your favourite authors will have their books being displayed slightly awkwardly and there's not much you can do about that because you can't really change the alphabet. And finally, if an author writes over several different genres, it might feel a bit weird to have those genres directly next to each other on your shelves. But next we are going to be trying the method I think has the most potential to be my new favourite one, and that is organising by genre. So first of all, I separated out all of my high fantasy books because I suspected that would be the genre I would own the most of. And I was right, but luckily they fit perfectly across the top shelf. Honestly, it fit so perfectly, I was impressed. And then within them I organised the books alphabetically by title, as I did with all of the other genres. On the next shelf I did all of my other fantasy books on the left, and on the right I put the books I would class as paranormal-esque, uh, with monsters and ghosts etc. Then a good few books I just couldn't decide whether they were fantasy or sci-fi. They're both, they're neither, they're there. I then had a full shelf, pretty much, of sci-fi, but for some reason I found it much harder to think about breaking those books down into smaller categories of sci-fi, so I just didn't. Next were my classics, not many, and all of my historical fiction, then mysteries and thrillers, contemporary books, and finally some memoirs on the very bottom shelf. This took about half an hour, which is pretty much the same as all of my other reorganisations, uh, so I think 30 minutes is just the average time it takes to redo my shelves, regardless of the method. Then finally, to distinguish between the different genres, I chose the first book of each genre to face outwards. I actually really don't like how this looks uh, because in my case my genres were already neatly divided by being on different shelves, but I guess this could work for other people's bookcases. So just like by organising by author, organising by genre can give someone a really quick impression of the kind of books you like to read. So if you looked at my shelves, if they're organised like this, you would see that I like reading fantasy, sci-fi and historical fiction, which is pretty much my entire reading taste. And I like how obvious that is when my shelves are organised like this. This method of organisation can also really help you pick the next book you want to read. If you're in like a specific mood that you want to read a thriller or a mystery, but you don't know what one exactly, you can just look at your thriller section and find your next read there. And I could only think of a few disadvantages for organising your shelves like this, mainly that sometimes it's hard to know what genre a book is if you haven't read it yet. For instance, if there is a book that you think is just a plain old contemporary novel, and then upon reading it you discover it has like ghosts in or something, you're going to have to awkwardly move it from your contemporary section to your paranormal section on your shelves. And especially if you've had that book for ages without reading it and it's sat in the wrong section for ages, that could make things a little bit awkward, even if it's just for you because you know you've made that mistake. And sometimes it can be hard to know the genre of books you have read. Sometimes it can feel like there's just no single correct genre to prescribe to a book. 
And then you're faced with a choice of either having to shove it into a section that you know deep down it doesn't actually belong in or completely abandoning your choice to organize by genre. But other than that, there aren't that many downfalls to having your shelves organized like this. So let's move on to my next method of organization, which to be honest, I'm less excited about, um, but that is organizing by age range. My original plan was to put the adult books at the top and then children's at the bottom, but when I started reorganizing, I accidentally started doing the opposite and once I realized, I didn't fancy starting all over again, so I just went with it. I started by taking out all of the children's books, or middle grade books as they're sometimes called, to put into a pile, and I was really surprised by how many I had on my shelves. Honestly, I didn't realize I still had this many kids' books. It turns out my books split quite evenly into about a third children's books, about a third YA, and then just over a third adult books. Within each of these three sections, I just put my books in any order. Really, there's no rhyme or reason to it other than what fitted on the shelves. And because of this, this was actually the quickest reorganization to date, taking only 20 minutes. And then as usual, I chose a couple of particular favorites or especially nice covers to turn outwards. So I said I didn't think I was going to like this method, and to be honest, I very nearly cut this from my list of reorganizations to try. But once I realized how neatly my books actually do split down quite evenly into the three different age ranges, I did start to understand why some people like to organize their shelves like this. For me personally, I really like seeing all my childhood reads together, it's just really nice and nostalgic, and it kind of acts like proof that I have in fact enjoyed reading from a very young age and these are some of the books that I have loved the longest. So if you tend to read equally between children's, YA and adult books, this method of organisation could be quite practical for you because it's just a very quick way of narrowing down on your shelves where a particular book should go. However, if you tend to read, say, 90% adult books, this isn't going to work for you, it's going to be quite pointless. It also requires you to make more decisions than you might think, for instance, within each of the age ranges, how are you going to organise your books? You could do it alphabetically, you could do it by author, which I think is how I would do mine if I had my shelves like this. But either way, you are going to have to pick a secondary method of organisation to do alongside this one. Because my books aren't organised at the moment within like the adult section or the YA section, and I can't find a fucking thing. I've had my shelves like this for over a week, and really, I just can't find anything. Another con is that without reading a book, it can be hard to judge exactly what age it's supposedly aimed at, and there might even be cases where you disagree with the marketing and a book that is widely considered YA you think is actually just an adult book and you'd want to place in your adult section. And there were a few books that I did struggle to place, for instance quite a lot of books I read when I was younger were actually YA books that were slightly too old for me, but that made them feel more grown up. Or were they actually just kids books that felt very grown up and I'm misremembering them? Basically you have to make more decisions than you would expect if you want to use this organisation method, so if you don't feel like dealing with all of that, this may not be the method for you. So next I am going to organise my books by height. This is actually a method that I've heard lots of people talk about, but I've never actually seen someone or met someone who organises their shelves like this. But let's give it a go. This whole thing actually only took me about 10 minutes because much as I expected, the vast majority of my books are exactly the same height. I like paperbacks and 95% of them are exactly the same size, so this was very very easy to put together. I only had a very few books shorter than this average size, so they were easy to pull out and put at the top of my shelves. And I also pulled out any books that I knew were taller than average, and I put them all together on one side, which did make it easier at the end. Once I had all my books in the right order, I decided not to pull out any to face forwards, partly because I couldn't be bothered at this point, but also because I think if you want to have your books organised by height, then it's the book spines themselves and the lines they make that end up being the focal point of the shelves. So breaking up a row of spines with a book cover facing out felt at odds with this particular method of organisation. But this did leave my last two shelves almost completely empty, so if I was going to keep my shelves organised this way, I would have to work out what to do with that.
So this definitely does make your shelves look neat. You might find it very satisfying to have shelves of books which are exactly the same height. So you get these really nice clean lines along all your shelves. So even though all the different colors are probably mixed up on your shelves, you still might really like the aesthetic appeal of this method. However, that's pretty much the only positive thing I can think to say about this. I knew before doing this that this was the only method that I just genuinely do not understand the appeal of. I'm sorry. I don't consider my books organized right now. They're just arranged in a particular way and I wouldn't be able to find pretty much any of them on my shelves right now. What this method has done is basically put all of my graphic novels and hardbacks together and the rest of my books are pretty much random. So if you ask me to find a book that I know is a hardback, I might be able to find it quite quickly, but literally 95% of my books could be anywhere. They could be anywhere and I wouldn't know where to start looking for them. So unfortunately, this isn't the one and it was never going to be because it's just not practical for me to find my books. Is it slightly hypocritical of me to really enjoy my rainbow shelves and to hate when they're organized by height, even though both of those methods are essentially about the physical appearance of the books? Maybe, but at least I'm aware of it. Another disadvantage of this is that quite a lot of my series are now split up because I had quite a few which had mismatched books. Some of my series were half in paperback, half in hardback. Sometimes they had completely different editions from all of the other books in the series. And so now they're split up and I really hate that. So I'm not actually even going to try and live with my shelves this way for a couple of days. I'm going to immediately rearrange them into our next method I'm trying, which is to organize them by the date they were published. This took a long time. It took a really long time. About an hour, actually. It took so long that my phone died just before I finished. The problem with setting this up is that you have to plan ahead in order to avoid it taking hours and hours. I have a shelf on my Goodreads for all of the books I currently own, so I just sorted that by date published and then worked my way through. But then there were plenty of books that I'd unhauled and forgotten to remove from Goodreads, and also plenty of books that I had never added to it. So I had to stop, add those onto Goodreads in order to work out where they went on my shelves, and that all took even longer. Basically, you're at the mercy of Goodreads, or whatever information source you're using in order to get the publication dates for your books. And Goodreads was just wrong about some of the books, especially some of my childhood series, where it had the publication dates all out of order, so I just had to kind of guess for those ones. This also took long, because really you shouldn't be guessing or estimating, because there is a specific right answer as to where each book should go, so you have to painstakingly sort your books out one by one. You also have to decide whether you want to go from oldest to newest, which is what I did, or have all your newest books first at the top of your shelves and then work backwards in time. So let's talk about the pros and cons of this organization method. Firstly, if you are someone who likes to keep up with new releases and to prioritize reading them, then this method could really work for you. You'll be able to see all of your newest books all together on the shelves and so it'll be really easy to pick out your next read from among them. It's also weirdly satisfying to see your books arranged by order of publication, which is something I didn't actually expect I would enjoy that much. I quite like the concept behind this organization method, if not its practical realities. And I found it genuinely interesting to look at what years my books are published in and see what years I'm most commonly reading from. The answer is actually 2015. I own 18 releases from that year, um, which is kind of nice actually, because it's actually the year I first discovered Booktube. On the other hand, if you're someone who prides himself on reading lots of classics and older books, this would again be an opportunity for you to show off those collections on your shelves. The disadvantages of this are that, again, your series are going to be split up across your bookshelves. However, if you do the opposite and put all your newest books at the top of your shelves and then work backwards in time, your series will be split up and in the reverse order, which for me is just even weirder. I don't think I could handle that on my shelves. Also, if you have all your oldest books at the top of your shelves, 
that means that all your shiny new books are going to be kind of relegated and hidden away at the bottom. Alternatively, if you decide to put all your new books at the top of your shelves, then every time you buy a new release, you'd have to shuffle everything across to keep up with it. Me personally, I don't buy that many new releases, so that wouldn't really be an issue for me. But if you are someone who loves buying brand new releases or even getting your hands on arcs, I can imagine moving everything over each time would get a bit tedious after a while. So although I like the bookshelf analysis I got out of trying this method of organisation, I'm now going to move on to my next method, which is to organise my shelves by read and unread books. Because my books were already organised by date, this was so incredibly easy for me to set up. It took less than 10 minutes. I literally just went through and turned around all of the books I had already read. Then I tried to make my shelves look just a bit nicer by turning outward some of my unread books and I did move them around slightly just to try and make my shelves look more even overall. But yeah, it was very, very quick and easy. So the main advantage this method of organisation has for me is that I really like being able to see my read books and my unread books distinguished from each other on my shelves. I'd been finding it kind of hard during all of the previous reorganisations not being able to see them separated from each other. It was more disconcerting than I thought it was going to be. So if your priority is simply to read as many books as you can, as quickly as you can, and displaying only your unread books on your shelves is the most practical way to use them, then I might recommend you give this method a try. Having said that, I hate it. I hate this method so much. I hate what it has done to my shelves. I really didn't mean to. I didn't go in thinking I would hate it. I was genuinely interested to give it a go and see how it would turn out. And it turns out it's terrible. Um, I really think it's the worst reorganization method for me that I have tried. I would say that objectively, objectively, there are two main disadvantages to this method. Firstly, I can't find anything on my shelves. I mean, obviously I can't find anything other than my unread books, but as someone who tends to reread books quite often, I therefore do go looking for books I've already read and I can't fucking find a thing. Absolutely no idea what any book is. And just generally, I like being able to actually see all the books I own. So obviously turning around 90% of them isn't gonna work for me. And the second main disadvantage to this is that if you have your shelves organized this way, you are gonna get a lot of shit from other people saying that your shelves are stupid and wrong. People care a lot, arguably too much, about other people's bookshelves. And I mean, really, your bookshelves are your business. Like, do whatever you want with them. If you wanna do this method and it works for you, absolutely go for it. I will support your decision to do something that I do not like at all. But yeah, don't tell other people that they and their bookshelves are stupid and wrong just because you don't like them. I mean, I honestly haven't given myself a lot of shit for having my bookshelves like this, but that's because they're my shelves and I'm allowed to do that to myself. So yeah, I'm finally gonna move on from this method um, and move on to the penultimate reorganization for this video. I'm gonna be putting my books back in date order, but this time they're organized by the date I read them. If you want to try this, your first decision will be if you want to put your earliest read or latest read books at the top. I decided to put my earliest read up there and then work down to my most recent ones with all of my unread books just about fitting onto one of the bottom shelves. This method of organisation will be pretty tricky to do if you don't keep detailed records of your reading per year. I use my Goodreads to make sure I always put my books in the right order, but unless you've been using Goodreads or something similar since birth, this is going to involve some guesswork at some point. I joined Goodreads in 2015, so I had the last six years of my reading in, I think the exact right order, but for before that, I just had to guess most of it. My childhood reading is kind of a blur, so the top two shelves are definitely not in the right order at all. When doing this, you also need to ask yourself, what about rereads? Do you categorize a book by the first or last time you've read it? And this was one of the reorganizations that took the longest. And again, when I was finished, I chose a few of my favorite books to face outwards.
Firstly, I should say that this method was suggested to me by my sister, so Verity, thanks for that suggestion, because as someone who really likes keeping track of what they read and when, this was a very satisfying organisation for me to try. You get all your childhood favourites back together on their shelves, and as I've learned through this video, I do quite enjoy seeing all my childhood books together on the shelf. Also, all your unread books are separated from the rest of them, which again, I've learned I really, really need. And just generally, after having all my books turned around last time, my shelves just look much nicer, which again, turns out is very important to me. I think the main advantage of this method is that your shelves will be able to reflect your changing reading and reading tastes over time. It's kind of like a mini history of you. I also think that aside from deciding, you know, originally what order you're going to organise your books in and how you're going to treat rereads, this is quite a simple way of organising your bookshelves. It might take some effort to set up at first, but then after that you're set and you don't really need to make any more decisions. There are of course also some disadvantages, for example your series are once again split up, but at least if you organise your books from oldest to newest, the series will be in the right order. And while this method easily distinguishes, you know, your childhood favourites at one end from your most recent reads at the other, everything in the middle does kind of meld together and I no longer know where anything is. So this would be too impractical for me to use. Ultimately, you just have to ask yourself, does it really matter to me the order in which I read my books? And if the answer is no, I doubt this is going to work for you. So this brings us to my final reorganisation I'm going to be trying. I am going to be putting my books in order of how much I liked them. This wasn't actually too difficult to set up because I can remember pretty clearly how much I liked reading my books. I got my Goodreads up just in case I needed it and started by picking out my favourite books to put on the top shelf and then any books I gave two stars to go on the bottom shelf. Happily, I don't own any books I've given one star to, and I actually owned fewer two stars than I thought, not even enough to fill the shelf. So then I started filling out the middle sections of three and four stars, and I actually didn't really use my Goodreads too much after this point, I just went on gut instinct. One choice I didn't have to make was where to put all my unread books, as they were already in their own section from the previous reorganisation, so I didn't even touch them. Then I had the genius idea to arrange any series that was split up over different shelves so that they would still be lined up vertically across those different shelves. I thought that this would help appease my need to keep series together, but by the time I realised it was just really difficult and unnecessary, I was already too committed, so I just struggled it out until the end. So similarly to some of the other organisation methods, this one is a really good way to show off your personal reading tastes. As all of your favourite books are given pride of place at the top of your shelves and are really obvious to anyone else looking at them. And you can also hide away any books that you didn't really like that much at the bottom of your bookcases. You can also use this method as a way to analyse your shelves and see if there are any patterns to your reading tastes that you hadn't realised before. Maybe with your books organised this way, you will notice an author who you never really considered a favourite, but that you seem to have rated all their books quite highly, and maybe you weren't considering picking out another one of their books, but this could be a sign to do so. Or maybe you'll notice that an author or genre you thought you really enjoyed have somehow ended up down at the bottom of your shelves, and that could be a clue to move on with your reading tastes and try something new. The cons for this method are the usuals, your series are split up, it doesn't look as nice as rainbow shelves, and it's quite hard to find things. Like usual, the books on the end of the spectrum, so your absolute favourite books and then the books you didn't really like that much, those are the easiest ones to find, but everything in the middle, all of my three and four star books have kind of again melded into one huge section that for the life of me I cannot navigate. Also, I've done this reorganisation assuming that everybody rates their books out of five stars, and if you use a completely different rating system for your books, or even no rating system at all, this might just be completely pointless for you. So now I have tried out my 10 different ways of organising my shelves, with mixed results, admittedly. Um, so here is a ranking of all of the things I have tried in order of how much I liked them and how much I think they would work for me and my shelves. 
But despite all that, despite all of the time I have spent filming this video, it's taken me literally months. I started filming it in August. I have only reaffirmed that the best way for me to organize my books is the original way they were at the very beginning of this video. Ultimately, none of these 10 methods were as good as the system I had already worked out for myself. However, this wasn't entirely wasted time. I actually really enjoy the process of reorganizing my shelves even if I then immediately want to undo it all. So I have had fun doing this, even if I didn't like all of the results. So I am now going to completely redo my shelves, put them back how they were three months ago, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.